Hi everybody, I'm Sophie. And I'm Lyos. And we are from Team Diesel. Last year when we were trying to figure out how to build a robot, we watched a bunch of YouTube videos for inspiration. Two of the robots that we really liked were a series by BuilderDude35 and another Ruffalo robot by Zachary Trotwine. Thanks guys for posting those videos, they helped us a lot. We will provide links to videos and files in the description box below. This is the robot we came up with. We named it Diesel One. We got the wheels from this motorcycle model. Wait, isn't that motorcycle supposed to have chains? Oh yeah, right, we stole that for last year's secret mission. Our robot did very well in the state's championship. We got two awards. One of them was a mechanical design and the other was the performance award. Now we would like to share our design with you so that you can learn from what we did and improve on our design. I also built a robot in Lego Digital Designer. We are going to post that file on our website. Now let's go over to the table and take a closer look at our robot. And remember, if you like this video, please subscribe. And smash that like button. Let's take a look around the robot. This is the side view. This is the bottom view. This is another side view. This is the back view. This is the front view. And this of course is the top view. We chose the large wheel for several different reasons. First of all, it's fast. And the large wheel reduces torque from the motor so that the wheel doesn't spin out when the robot starts up. Also, a tip. We use this blue peg here to easily count how many rotations the robot took going from one place to another. The large wheel is also great because it can roll over obstacles easily. So for example, last year, there was a small black ring holding up the blue ball in the center of the field. A small wheel would have gotten caught, but the large wheel can roll right over it. Another awesome thing about this tire is that it has a round profile, meaning that it has a single point of contact. A tire with a flat profile like this one, you wouldn't know if it turned at the left corner, the right corner, the middle, or even anywhere in between, making it less precise. We used four motors altogether, two large motors which drive the robot, and two medium motors which power the attack. The two large motors are on the bottom of the robot. They're turned upside down, as you can see, because we wanted to use the larger wheels, and it also makes the robot more compact and gives it a lower center of gravity. The two medium motors are tucked under the EV3 brick, right here. We use three sensors altogether, two light sensors, which we use for finding colors on the board and line squaring. We also had a gyro, which is somewhere in the middle of the robot, but you can't see it because of the Lego bricks. We pinky promise that it's there though. We use this for driving straight and for turning precisely. Oh, and since we're at the bottom of the robot, we use one caster, which we just figured out got a little bit rusted over the summer. When we first built the robot, we used two casters, which gave our robot issues driving straight. We then switched to one caster and it solved the problem. We put the EV3 brick on top for easy access. And we also tucked all the wires neatly below the EV3 so that we don't get snagged on the field. We used a finite state machine so that we could easily select which program that we wanted to run. We also printed the gyro reading on the main screen, as you can see. This way we would know if there was an issue with the gyro and so that we can know when we would have to restart. We have one bumper on the front and the back. These are good for lining up with walls 
And they also have studs on them, which can take passive attachments. The passive attachments are really easy to put on, just like this. We also have two aggressive, sorry, active attachment ports. One in the front and one in the back. These are built the same way so that we can build our attachments easily. We tried many different ways of building our attachment ports until we came up with this design. It allows us to put on and remove attachments easily and is very secure. We have two holes in the bottom which line up with two pegs on the attachment. This holds the bottom secure. We also have two studs at the top which guide the attachment and then we secure it with a key. And it's just that easy. Removing is also very quick. Our attachment port design allows us to transfer power in different ways. Perpendicular to the motor with a bevel gear, or parallel to the motor with a small regular gear. We tried to use attachments for multiple missions to save on time. For example, this attachment threw a ball as it's holding and pulled a module out of a hub. This attachment carried a core to the 3D printer and it listed the exercise machine. It also has a wheel on the side for guidance. Building a new attachment is very easy. All you need is a frame, an axle with two large spacers, a small bevel gear, and a small spacer on it, two pins at the, for the bottom, and the stud for holding the key. We used a Wi-Fi dongle to connect our robot to the network. This way, we could upload and run new programs without having to hook up our robot with a cable. The Wi-Fi dongle connects into the USB port on the EV3 brick. We used a rechargeable battery for our robot. It charges in the back. The advantages of using a rechargeable battery are that it's smaller, it's environmentally friendly because you don't have to throw out used batteries, and we don't have to take the robot apart to change the batteries. Well, that about wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough. Remember, we are posting our LEGO Digital Designer file on our website, and you can find that link in the description box below. And just a reminder, like and subscribe. Bye!